Hi, Hampton. Thank you so much for carving out time to talk with us. Congr First off and foremost, congratulations on earning a spot on USA's weightlifting team. So excited for you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm really excited too. <laughs> and you're getting ready to head to the Olympics here in August in Paris. We, we are, we're excited for you. Thank you. I'm uh, again, I'm really excited. I can't wait. I mean, it is such an exciting time. You're only 20 years old. You'll be a first time Olympian. Uh, your dad is your coach. He'll be a first time Olympic coach. Uh, how did the two of you kind of celebrate clinching that spot? We first knew for sure that I was going to be on the Olympic team. Um, right before I competed at the world cup in Thailand. Um, so we knew that it was a possibility going into it that we might know for sure uh, ahead of time and he told me that if it does end up like that then um, we just go for something big have fun um, and actually ended up setting a world record in the clean and jerk that competition. Before we get to that world record, um, share with us a little bit about how you even became aware and passionate about weightlifting. I started doing some like CrossFit and barbell sport, like barbell work to get stronger for soccer when I was about 10 years old. Um, started doing local weightlifting competitions like a year and a half, two years after that. Um, so I was 12. Um, and about a year later, I did my first national level meet, which was youth nationals here in Atlanta. Um, that was when I decided that um, I wanted to stop playing soccer, just focus only on weightlifting and really just haven't stopped since then. <laughs> I think it's so interesting that you know, your, your dad is your coach. What does that relationship look like? Do you have like specific boundaries when you're in the gym? It's coach athlete. When you're in the house, it's father, son. Like how do you kind of, uh, you know, have those boundaries, so to speak? Yeah. So we've, we have struggled with that some in the past, uh, but lately it's felt more natural. I, I feel like since really the beginning of this quad when I really started going for the Olympic spot it's just felt a lot more natural um and it's almost been it's almost felt like he plays both roles at the same time um at least to me is how it feels um like like he definitely is more coach in the gym more dad in the house but I, I feel like it works best when he we've really figured out how we can work well together and he knows when he needs to be coached and when he needs to be dad. And I feel like that's what's been working so well lately. Fast forward, you're the first man from the USA to win a world championship gold medal in 50 years. Describe to us that feeling, that moment when that all happened. That, that whole day was just like, just really emotional um, because before I did my clean and jerks, I actually bombed out in the snatch. I missed all my, missed all my snatches on the competition stage, which first time bombing out in an international event, um, really was just kind of shocked about that um but you know after i after i missed my last attempt uh my dad just looked at me and said do you want a clean and jerk and i said yes and like, didn't we didn't have anything to lose so so we just went for it and uh Yeah, we were in the back watching, watching um, the Chinese athlete take his last attempt. It was the last attempt of the session, and he missed it. And we, it, it was immediately just so emotional. <laughs> this big hug between us. Um, really, that's the first time I've uh, 
cried out of happiness. <laughs> a lot of a lot of sacrifice goes into getting you to that moment, getting you to the Olympics. I love that you're sitting in your gym that is your garage that you've converted. Talk to me about what it means to be able to have everything that you need right at your own house. I mean, it really makes it just way, way easier, uh, of course. Um, I really don't know that I would be able to compete at this level if it wasn't if I didn't have everything that I need available to me um, as conveniently as I do. So all my food is at the house, all my, all the equipment, everything that I'll need for training. Um, really, it, and all the recovery tools as well. So really it, frees up my schedule to allow me to fit as much in as possible to keep me, keep me healthy, keep me prepared for training. Um, it definitely wouldn't be possible if I didn't have everything here at the house with me. You did mention uh, sacrifices and yeah, my, like, I of course have to make my own sacrifices. I have just the strict diet, the, uh, the strict schedule. I don't, I don't ever leave the house uh, <laughs> except to go to physical therapy and massage and stuff like that on my rest days. I mean, my family also makes sacrifices. They sacrifice their, the whole three car garage, all the energy, money, effort to put this whole thing together, um, you know, sacrificed lots of space in the house, lots of lots of time out of their lives to help me make my Olympic dreams possible. And I'm just so grateful for that. Will your family be able to join you in Paris? Yes, they will. Um, so of course my dad is uh, traveling with, on the same schedule as all the coaches. Um, then my mom and sister are going to be going to be in Paris for um, I forget exactly how long. It's about two weeks uh, to to be there and cheer me on. Got just a whole list of family and friends that are going to be coming to support me and have already bought tickets to my session. It's it's, it's going to be so amazing. I'm. I'm so excited. Aww. Well, and, and uh, you know, how fun that the Olympics are in Paris this year. I mean, if you have to go to a city, that's a great one to get to go to and not a hard yeah. sell for a family. Get to see you, you know, maybe bring home a gold, go to the Eiffel Tower, have some coffee. We understand you're a coffee aficionado. So talk to me a little, will you have any time? Have you built in any time for some sightseeing with them after? I'm most, just most focused on, uh, the competition itself. Um, we were definitely planning on watching some of the other events, um, but I'm not, definitely not gonna let it distract me too much ahead of my competition. Um, really, I wanna be as prepared as I possibly can be to, to, to do well. Um, but yeah, we're definitely going to have a, it, it's going to be a really great experience. What, in, what encouragement do you have for maybe some young aspiring athletes that might be cheering you and team USA on? I've been really in the sport for like eight years. Um, and I feel like that speaks a lot to, um, to the power of consistency, um, dedication to to the things that you want to the things that you want to do to achieve your goals, um, but it, more than just um, more than just putting the time in to achieving them, it's uh, really important. 
the sacrifices that you make need to match your goals is what i'm trying to say you know you you've got tear you know front and center across your chest which is fantastic and they're outfitting a lot of athletes at the olympics this year what does it mean to you to be able to represent the brand and your your country in this way both of them to me are just incredible uh opportunities uh just for different reasons um I'm just very grateful that I have the I've received the support that I have from Tier, and I'm proud that I get to represent them on the international stage. Uh, really, it's and it's it's just amazing to be able to represent my home country uh, on the Olympic stage. It's, again, it's so much hard work, dedication, sacrifice from, again, not only me, but just so many people around me. Uh, and I feel like it's all really just paying off.